Hey everybody, uh, I wanted to make a video where I walk through, I guess, kind of the common commands that I use in the terminal, uh, sort of on a day-to-day -day basis, I guess. And so if you are using things like Ionic or Angular, uh, there's going to be, you know, commands that you're used to using. Obviously you need to run commands like the uh, Ionic start command to generate an application, or maybe the, I uh, use the generate commands that Ionic has to create you know, pages or services or things like that. Uh, but then there are also just the generic commands that you can use to navigate uh, around the terminal as well. And so these are things like uh, you know, changing your directory or creating folders or files or deleting folders. And these are the kinds of things I guess you don't really need to use. You can sort of get by without using most of these if you prefer to just say, uh, open up, you know, find a window and just delete files manually by clicking or creating new files that way. Uh, but if you are at least, uh, I guess, a little bit familiar with uh, running these commands, you can save yourself quite a bit of time if you get comfortable with doing more things inside of uh, the terminal by running commands. And so if you look up you know, various commands that you can run in the terminal, uh, you'll probably find a, a lot that you can use and there are a lot of useful things you can do. Um, but personally, I find that there's a reasonably small set of commands that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So I wanted to focus specifically on those. Uh, so if you aren't that familiar with using the command prompt, uh, with running these commands, then you could just focus on these particular things and they'll probably help out quite a bit. Uh, so this uh, tutorial is going to be specific to uh, a Linux uh, Mac uh, environment. So if you are running Windows, uh, you're not going to be able to run these commands uh, exactly. Um, uh, so sorry to those of you who are using Windows, but if you are still interested, you should be able to find kind of one-to-one -one, uh, equivalents of most of these commands. So it will just be a matter of looking up, you know, what those differences are. Okay, with that said, let's uh, let's get into actually trying out some of these commands. Okay, so I've got my terminal up now. Uh, I'm actually using iTerm2 for this, but you can just use the standard Mac terminal as well. And so what I'm going to do is just go through uh, a list of different commands and We'll see how they work and generally we'll try and you know, start off with the really uh, basic stuff that I use a lot and then work down towards the stuff that I don't use as often but that's still useful. And so the command I most commonly use uh, and which is one that probably most people do because you need to use it to uh, uh, change any Ionic applications you create or change into that working directory uh, and that's the, the CD command which stands for uh, change directory I think. And so the basic idea with the CD command is you just uh, type CD and then the folder that you want to change into. Uh, so I have a, a test application set up you know, that I just use for videos and stuff called Playground. So if I write CD Playground, that's going to switch into that directory for me. Uh, you can also uh, go back directories if you want by doing CD dot dot slash. So that's going to go up one level. So you can see now we're back in the uh, the videos directory again and so if I change back into playground again uh, I could also say go up two levels so if I say cd dot dot dash dot dot dash that's going to go up to videos and then up again to my ionic folder uh, which is what my videos folder is in and you can also supply multiple uh, folder paths to go through as well so if I write cd playground forward slash uh, so rather cd uh, videos forward slash playground that's going to take me right through to the playground directory so you can either run these commands one at a time you can just go cd dot dot dash cd dot dot dash and then cd videos cd playground uh, so whatever you prefer to do uh, you can do that and another useful tip is that if you want to change into back to your like root folder of your the user folder on your computer you can just do uh, cd uh, tilde i think it's called the little squiggly thing and that's going to take you back right to that root folder and so as I'm running these CD commands, uh, obviously I'm not storing the entire uh, folder structure of my computer in my head and navigating around that. Uh, so it's useful to, uh, to be able to see what folders and files are in the, uh, the directory that you're currently working with. And so to do that, we can use the ls command. So if I write uh, ls now and run that, I can see a list of all the files and folders here. So now I could see, well, we want to go to the, the source folder and then I might run ls again to see what files and folders are in here. Uh, I can see there's an app folder, so I might say cd app. And you can just keep doing that to navigate around. And again, you can go cd dot dot slash to go back up a level. 
And so once you can use those two commands, you can sort of easily navigate through folders on your computer. Uh, now, generally, you won't need to run this particular command, but you can also uh, supply some arguments to the ls command. Now, I don't actually even know what these arguments stand for, but if I supply the dash la arguments, if you run that, you'll see a lot more uh, information about the particular files, including uh, the permissions that the files have, who owns them, when they're created. And so although you won't usually need to run uh, that particular command, it can be useful because you can use it to see hidden uh, files and folders. So if I was to go into uh, just the root folder of this project, for example, and run ls, uh, you can see the list of files that are there. But if I run ls-la, uh, we actually see a few more files. So we can see the dot files, uh, which are ignored uh, typically. So uh, we can see the git folder here and the git ignore file, which we can't see when we just run the standard ls command. Uh, another useful thing to know is that um, this isn't a command, but if you hit the up arrow key on your uh, keyboard, you can cycle back through all of the commands that you just recently run, uh, which can save you some time, especially if it's a longer command that you want to run. So you can just hit the up arrows and down arrows and it'll cycle backwards and forwards through your command history. Uh, another useful thing to know, which isn't a command, is that you can also use the tab key to auto-complete for you. So uh, again, if I run ls to see what files we have in here, uh, let's say I want to go to the source folder, I can write cd source, and I'll see the you know what's in here. And I can see I have the environments folder, for example. And so I could just write cd environments, um, but Obviously, you know, for longer things, it's going to take a little bit to type, especially if you're you know, specifying a full path or something like that. And you can also make mistakes. You can make a typo and that's just going to eat up time. So uh, if you're just typing, if I, I can just write E and then hit tab and it auto completes environments for me. Uh, if there's multiple files uh, or folders that started with E, then you might need to type a few more letters. So you might need to type like ENV before you could auto complete, or you can just auto complete straight away and it will feel to uh, the point where the files differ and then you just uh, fill in a, a one or two more letters and then hit tab again and it's going to fill out the rest. And so there's actually a good uh, example here of that because we have two files config.spec.json. So if I was to just say do t, I'll do cdt and if I hit tab there's multiple files that start with t here so when I hit tab nothing's going to happen uh, because this is where they differ after the first letter. So I want the TS config, so if I write TS, then tab, that's going to fill that into the unique point here. And now it needs to know, well, is it app or is it spec? So if I just write A and hit tab again, now it's going to fill out the rest because that's the only possible uh, match. And it's also useful to be able to uh, uh, modify files, create files and modify files. In this global.css file that I have here, let's say I wanted to make some change to that. And uh, so typically, you know, when you're working with a project, you're probably just going to be working in your text editor, you know, whether that's Visual Studio or uh, Sublime or whatever. Uh, but, you know, maybe you're just in the terminal right now and you just need to make a quick change. You can edit files by using Nano. And there are other options to edit files as well, but this is just the one I prefer. So if I write Nano and then global.scss, if I hit enter, that's going to open up that file and I can now edit that from the command line here. So I could make any changes I want to that. And then when I'm done, I just have to hit uh, control X. And you can see down here, that's the command for exit. And if I made any changes, that would ask me if I want to save it. I'll just do that just for the sake of it. I'll add, um, I'll add an S here. That can be my change. So I hit control X. Now it says uh, save modified buffer, answering no will destroy changes. So if I just hit Y and then I specify the file name, which is I just want to overwrite that file. I hit enter and now the changes to that file will be saved. You can also create new files this way. So if I say nano, um, we'll say test.html, and now that opens up a new file for, for me to work with. And so if I just add something into here, uh, I'll just add a little comment. And uh, now if I hit control X again, I uh, say, yes, I wanna save the changes, file name to write, test.html, and now those changes will be in the test.html file, which has been added here. Uh, sometimes you also just want to create a file. You won't want to necessarily add anything to it. You just want it to be there. And so in that case, uh, touch is a useful command. So if I just run uh, touch, say test2.html, 
Uh, I don't get taken into an editor or anything like that. I can't modify what's in that file. Uh, but if I list the files again in this directory, you can see that we have test2.html. So you can just quickly create uh, files and folders with the touch command. Uh, you can also use the uh, mkdir uh, command. I'm not really sure how the best way to say that out loud is, but uh, make directory command basically. So you can make a folder using mkdir and then just supply the name of the folder that you want to create. Uh, so I'll just call it test folder. And again, if I list the files in here, we can see that we have this test folder now, and then I could change into that uh, if I wanted to. And the last command that I want to cover is the remove command. So there's a command you can use to delete files and folders. Uh, so let's say, you know, we wanna clean this up uh, a little bit now. Uh, I've created all these you know, test files, which I, I don't really want in here. So let's say I wanna get rid of test.html. All, uh, all I need to do is run rm uh, test.html. And now if we take a look again, you can see that that test file is gone. Now uh, let's do the same with uh, test2.html. And in the case where you want to remove an entire folder, uh, you'll probably want to, you, know, you want to delete the folder and you want to delete every file that's inside that folder. And if there's any subfolders, you want to delete all of those as well. And so to do that, you can use the rm command still, uh, but also supply it with the dash rf uh, options. So if I run rm-rf test folder, that's going to delete test folder and also any files or folders within test folder. So it's a, it's a recursive delete. So you should be careful with this command because obviously if you, you know, supply the wrong folder to this, uh, you can end up deleting a whole bunch of stuff that you didn't want to. So uh, if you are using the uh, remove command with the rf options, just make sure you're sure of what you're doing and that you definitely want to delete the folder. Okay, so that was just a relatively small set of commands compared to all of the commands that are uh, available when working in the Mac terminal or just a general Linux environment. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, these are the commands that I use uh, most days. A lot of the time I won't even use the, you know, the make directory, the remove commands, the touch and nano commands. Mostly it's just CD, LS, and that's about it really. Uh, but those other commands do come in handy uh, sometimes. So if you are feeling intimidated by all the commands that are available to learn. If you just focus on this small set, uh, that'll probably be really useful to you and you'll be able to get a lot of benefit out of that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.